going everybody and welcome to the channel. Today we are taking a look at the MJX B12 EIS. It is a foldable 5G Wi-Fi 4K digital zoom camera, 22 minute flight time, brushless motor, GPS RC quadcopter ready to fly. So taking a closer look, it is very similar to the SJRC F11 Pro 4K drone that I have just done a review on. Same size as well with 330 millimeter wheelbase. Now the arms fold out just the same exact way. It has foldable props with the center hub. It's got brushless 2204, 1500 kV motors. We got landing legs in the front arms and we got four rubber pads on the body and the rear arms are low enough to the ground so it will help out sticking that landing. Now there are status LED lights on the front arms and status LED lights on the bottom of the rear arm. On the bottom, we do have the super bright LED lights and the optical flow sensor camera this time. And the battery is mounted on the top of the quadcopter. It has two buttons, one on each side to remove the battery by squeezing them. So squeeze both of the buttons and pull up to remove the battery. It is a 7.6 volt, 3,400 milliamp sized LiPo battery. And it is set to have 22 minutes of flight time and it will take five hours to charge. So charge it up using the provided charge cable and here is the USB-C port. Now there are four LED lights on the top and a push button power on and off switch. So to turn it on, long press the power button and the battery will power on and you can now check the remaining charge left in the battery. Long press the power button again to turn the battery off. Just like that. And that is exactly how the quadcopter will power on and off as well. So place it back on the quadcopter. It goes only in one way and push it down to click it into place and it is ready to go. In the front is the 130 degree fill the view electronic image stabilization zero to 90 degree remote tilt adjustable 5G Wi-Fi FPV digital zoom one third inch CMOS sensor camera and it is on an anti jello mount. Now it will take 4K videos at 30 FPS and 1080p videos at 60 FPS and the micro SD card slot is on the side of the quadcopter. Now it supports up to a 128 gigabyte micro SD card and a class 10 or higher micro SD card is recommended. Now the Wi-Fi is 5G, meaning it uses the 802.11 AC protocol wireless network. So you do not need cellular data for the Wi-Fi to work. And the Wi-Fi app is called the MRC Pro app, a free downloadable app in the app store. So you can go ahead and check it out. The remote controller is familiar. It has fold out antennas, but the antenna on the left is the only antenna that actually has the antenna wire going up the antenna. The one on the right does not. So you want to position the antenna on the left for optimum signal strength. So if you are going to be flying without a phone on the phone clip, you might want to flip the antenna straight up vertically since straight up the antenna and straight below the antenna is the weakest signal area and around the antenna is the most strongest signal strength. But if you are going to be flying with a phone on the phone clip, rotate the antenna on the left and position it facing down. That way you will have optimum signal strength. So we have the pull out phone holder and it will fit up to my iPhone 6 plus size phone with a phone case perfectly. And we also have the fold out hand grips which feels good in the hands and does the job. Now on the top left shoulder, we have a rotary dial that does not have any functions. It does not even rotate. 
but we have a one keto takeoff and one keto land button. But on the right shoulder, we do have another rotary dial that will remotely adjust the tilt angle of the camera from zero to 90 degrees. And we have a speed changing button that also serves as the on off switch for the super bright LED light that is located on the bottom of the quadcopter. And on the side of the remote control is the GPS on off switch. We have the LCD display screen in the front. We have the power sliding on and off switch, the camera button, which takes a photo with the short press and takes video with the long press. We have the return to home button and the, the lock and unlock button to arm and disarm the motors. And it will take two AA batteries. Now, both sticks to the bottom and to the left will calibrate the gyros and both sticks to the bottom and to the right will initiate the compass calibration. But once the quadcopter is turned on and the remote controller is turned on, they will automatically bind and automatically go into the compass calibration mode. So to get started, power on the quadcopter, long press the power button. The ESCs have sung their song. Now power on the remote control. That single beep means that the quadcopter is now bound to the remote control. And that double beep means that it is now ready for compass calibration. So like any GPS quadcopter, you do have to calibrate the compass every time you fly. So first, you need to rotate the quadcopter horizontally in either direction until the LED lights turn green and flash alternately from front to the rear. Sometimes it takes a couple of rotations and sometimes it takes more and we already have the LED lights turning green and it is now flashing from front to the rear. So horizontal compass calibration is complete. Now either hold the quadcopter with the nose down or with the nose up and rotate it in either direction once more until the front LED light turns solid red. So with the nose down, I'm turning it in clockwise rotation. And the front LED lights have turned solid red. So vertical compass calibration is now complete. So place it back on the level surface. Now, if the rear lights are solid green, as it is right now. That means at least seven GPS satellites have been acquired and you are ready to fly. So now both sticks to the bottom and to the left will calibrate the gyros of the quadcopter. And once they turn back to red and green, you are now safe to fly and can go ahead and hit the unlock and lock button to arm and disarm the motors. But if the rear lights are still flashing, it means the necessary GPS satellites has not been acquired yet. You are able to still arm and fly in the non-GPS mode by turning the GPS switch to the off position, but you will not have home position locked. So don't hit the return home button while flying in this mode. Land the quadcopter and turn on the GPS switch and arm the motors once again, and then take off again to establish the home point. So every time it arms and takes off, that is where the new home point will be, and it will return to home to that home point. All right, guys, here we go with the test flight. So the quadcopter has already been calibrated, so it is ready to go. We have acquired all of the necessary GPS. We've got red lights in the front, we got green solid lights in the rear and on the LCD display, I got 15 satellites locked in. So let me go ahead and turn on my phone and connect to the Wi-Fi network. And the Wi-Fi network is called the Drone 4E Wi-Fi network. I'm already connected. And here is the mobile app. It is called the MRC Pro mobile app, free downloadable app in the app store. So go ahead and check it out. So that's how it looks like. I'm going to 
jump right into it and hit next hit click and we should get directly into it it shows you all of the functions of all of the icons and we are in nice first let's go into the camera setting and check it out here let me go ahead and screen record so you guys can see what I'm looking at three two one and it is recording all right so here we go smooth max it is by default set to 4k so you will take 4k videos and 4k photos if you set it to 1080p it'll take 1080p videos and 1080p photos but in the Wi-Fi phone app it will record 720p video and 1080p photo for this demonstration I'm gonna hit it to the 1080p because I'm gonna upload it in 1080p and then I'll do another video where I take videos in 4k and photos in 4k and upload that in 4k so I got that set and the next one you can adjust the parameters of this camera as well so that is pretty cool all right okay next let's go into the settings and here I have adjusted the maximum flight altitude to 120 meters I have that turned on but the next one that says max flight distance 15 to 200 meters I turned that one off because I don't want to be capped at 200 meters uh, this keeps going back here uh, this quadcopter is supposed to have a distance of 600 meters plus so I don't know I had left that one off so hopefully we can go beyond the 200 meters and on the next one is the orbit radius that set to 5 by default and return home altitude set to 15 by default so we'll leave that just the way it is all right and what else is there gyro check 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 status and then you got some flight log so all right so let's get going i'm gonna go ahead and arm the motors hold on a second first of all let's pick it up and take a look here at the camera yeah it looks pretty good nice and smooth now remember this does have electronic image stabilization but it does not have a mechanical gimbal so the horizon will tilt with the quadcopter as the quadcopter is flying about so let's go ahead and take some photos right off the bat we got some snow dusted on the mountains over there okay there you go very nice nice and smooth the electronic image stabilization seems to be working out pretty good here and I believe you can also take photos while you are taking videos while you're up in the air so you can take a snapshot all right so taking some photos there let's go ahead and start the video long pressing the photo button okay and it says TF and it has a little counter all right so let's go ahead and arm the motors there you go and it takes one of those yeah vroom 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 and it is ready to go but if you don't take off in a certain time limit the motors will automatically turn off it's a safety precaution so let's go ahead and witness that and there you go all right once again yeah vroom vroom and one key to take off nice comes to a nice little hover at this altitude here okay let's check out the position hold get it angry let go and look at that goes right back to the same position awesome now if you did not do your calibrations correctly especially your compass calibration it will do like a toilet bowl effect and all that kind of stuff so you don't want to be flying when it does that you want to bring it back down and redo the compass calibration so looks like I'm in speed number two here so let me go down to speed number one there you go speed number one and check it out this is the full pitch that's how slow this quadcopter travels in speed number one good for taking smooth videos and here's the full yaw 
Yeah, so good for taking smooth videos. Look at that. So you can take very smooth, controlled videos. And let's see the super bright LED light here. Look at that, super bright. You can see it from far away, even during it at the daytime. Now, it does not turn on if the motor is not armed. So it only turns on if the motor is armed. The perfect for landing and you can tilt the camera straight down to 90 degrees and see you see where you're landing especially at night so let's leave it right there all right let's go ahead and tilt the camera okay so this servo has just one speed it just goes and does its thing at one speed it doesn't slow down even though I'm just slightly rotating that dial so let's see if I intermittently do it no this one does not go smooth like the F11 I guess the F11 the gimbal helped out when it did this all right so we also have this zooming feature oops see like I said I can take a photo while I'm recording a video let's see it also has a zooming effect and this is a digital zoom unlike the in-app zoom of the F11 so this one will show up on the recorded video as well so that is pretty cool look at that but you have to tap it intermittently you can't just hold it so you gotta tap it okay there you go I'm gonna go ahead and raise the camera up horizon and let's check out speed number two look at how nicely it is holding its position that is just freaking awesome and that is a full pitch and here's the full yaw in speed number two so you are able to move it's a pretty decent speed I guess so it's not like a sport quadcopter. This is mainly for taking videos and positioning yourself with speed number two and then you go to speed number one to take some smooth videos. But with the electronic image stabilization, it should be pretty decent. But when you make the turn, the horizon moves with you. And it's going to be a little bit more choppier than if it did have a mechanical gimbal. Alright, so I think that's just about it for the shoulder switches. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it in and establish our home point. So I'm going to use the one key to land. And it is coming down. And there's a landing pad. And it stops and hovers there for a little bit. You are still able to maneuver the quadcopter to where you want it to land so there you go bounces up and down a little bit and motor shut off all right so place it right in the middle of the landing pad now what i'm going to do is i'm going to stop my screen recording because sometimes excuse me my screen recording just freezes and it just doesn't record and does not get saved so save that segment I'm gonna hit it again three two one and there we go screen recording once again all right so let's go ahead and take off once again arming the motors and manually taking off this time and let's go ahead and check out the core functions the return home functions so let's let go of the sticks comes to a nice hover and let's check out the return home ah rises up in altitude does it turn around nope it just starts to head back backwards and comes to its position right above the landing pad and begins to descend not much prop wash 
still nice and smooth and there is a little breeze so it is fighting the breeze as it's coming down you can see the clock up the tilting a little bit so it's gonna come down right where it took off from just basically yeah look at that very nice very nice okay so it looks like I got three lights remaining on the battery life indicator so let's go ahead and arm the motors once again and manually take off and let's go away this time I want to check out the fail safe return home so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the remote control and see what happens all right it should take six seconds before it realizes it has no connection and there you go that must have been six seconds oh look at all those birds that must be a thermal all right quadcopter is coming back it raises raised up in altitude to that 15 meter height and hovers there same behavior and it comes down so exactly the same behavior as you press the button for return home but the only thing is it is a fail-safe return home this is all autonomous and what control is turned off it is not reconnected so let it land let it go through its procedure and wow it's gonna land just just about on the same spot yeah wow impressive okay so on this one we're going to turn the remote control back on while it's coming back so let me go ahead and turn on the remote and we have reconnected the signal bars just went up immediately so arming the motors and taking off look at all them birds it must be nice to be a bird you can fly anytime you want <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and turn off the remote. And once it starts to come back, I'm going to turn it back on and retake control of it. I'll take another photo. Oh, no, I can't take photos. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn it back on. It doesn't reconnect automatically. Let me hit that return to home. And there you go. You got to hit that return to home button to reconnect while it's coming back from a fail safe. All right, so there you go. Very nice so far no complaints at all let's see if we can do some FPV here oh yeah right above me turn around a little bit of a stutter here the FPV kind of stuttered a little bit so let's go this way I'm in speed number two but still it's very nice and smooth Oh yeah, very nice. We're about 100 meters away. Turn around. And there I am. Pitching forward. Coming towards myself. I lost video. And here I go again. Yep. And there she goes. Let's turn around, come back this way. What a beautiful day it is. It wasn't this beautiful the last few days though. <laughs> it was windy, cloudy at times. So what I want to do is I want to check out the distance of the Wi-Fi FPV. So let's go on this way. and let's see how far i can take this thing where am i no i don't want to go that way i want to go towards the homes here there you go okay here we go i'm continuing to push it and i'm going to raise my hand a little bit oh wow it's got pretty good distance here Okay, I can't read the tiny little numbers on here. 240 something? Yeah, that's what it looks like. 
and looks like 300 meters have been reached and I had a frozen video but it, I got it back it is still going oh wow okay let's landmark that little road there's the second road wow it's going pretty far and there's the curving road and that is basic oh I got it back look at that I still got video oh this is unbelievable we are at what 500 what is that yep 540 and I still have video wow hopefully a uh, screen record comes out and it kind of stopped here TX no signal return it says so there's a green return home icon here and what did it do returning it says all right so it didn't have that much of a distance going this way but I will definitely try and do a maximum distance test on this thing with an all-in-one VTX it should be heading its way back I see the distance numbers getting smaller and smaller but I have no video all right so heading back and on the LCD display it says home also so it should be heading back and I do see a little dot coming back this way it did go pretty far yeah so very good Wi-Fi connectability this morning and it is coming back so I'm gonna go ahead and hit that return to home button and I have retaken control of it so this thing has a low voltage return to home that was a fail safe and it also has a low voltage return to home so when it's away a hundred meters and above 30 meters in height it will return to home so I'll go this way and park it right about there and let it hold steady I'm just going to double check on my oh you see what I'm saying my screen record failed me so you guys didn't see that portion of the recording I'm gonna go ahead and hit that screen record once again oh, screen recording video save to photos hopefully I got some of that so there you go so we are checking out the low voltage return home and once the uh, battery life indicator goes to two bars it will do a first phase of low voltage return home in which it'll start coming back and once within the 100 meter radius and 30 meters in height you can hit that return home button and retake control of the quadcopter but if it does the second phase of low voltage return home uh, it will come back and land itself and you are not able to hit the return home button and retake control so we'll cruise around right around there until it hits the low voltage return home so let's go ahead and turn and taking the sights kind of it's kind of an intermittent video there I am doing a little yaw getting some sun strike on the props yeah so let's head on over to the school over here so if you want to take smooth videos even in speed number two just push the pitch a little bit so you can travel slowly but if you really want to take smooth videos go to speed number one speed number one and you can full pitch and it will just barely move <laughs> it is moving I can see it moving and I see a couple of birds it looks like a bird and I do believe I am making progress but I might have no video right at the moment but we got the SD card recording 
So we can take a look at that. Nice and smooth. Yeah, it's pretty far away also. And I don't think this thing is registering how far away it is because I don't have any video. Or do I? Is it moving or is it not? Oh, it is not connected now. Oh, and also that's the beep indicating low voltage. So I see it rising up in altitude there from where, where it was going. So no matter what le altitude you are, it will still rise 15 meters up from it and it'll start coming back. So it's coming back. And on the app, it says the battery only support drone flying in 30 meter altitude and 100 meter range. So it is low voltage phase one. So I can hit the return to home and retake control of it. But it's still beeping to let you know that it is in the first phase of low voltage return to home. So there's speed number one. So I wanna, okay, speed number two. <laughs> So you're not able to go beyond the 100 meters. So let's see if there's a geofencing and bounces off. Yeah, there you go. Bounced off right there. And I am unable to travel any further. So I'm pulling it back. And then let's do that one more time out. Let me go ahead and push it out. And let's see if it hits the uh, geofence. And there you go, bounced up. And that is the maximum distance that you are allowed to travel in radius. So you are still able to travel within this, which is a pretty decent amount of distance. And triple beeps intermittently indicates the first phase of low voltage return to home, okay? Okay, once we hit the second phase, then the beeps will change and we will be notified that it's in the second phase and it will start its return home process. Well, still a very nice quad, even though it doesn't have a mechanical gimbal, it still takes very smooth videos. Yeah, look at that. Super cool. This thing does deserve another video in 4K, only in 4K. So I'll make another video of me cruising around the park in 4K so we can showcase the camera quality. But for this flight test video, I'm just going to take the 1080p and upload the whole thing in 1080p. So it's easier and it's faster to upload you know YouTube renders the 4k video for almost half a day even though it's like a five minute video and if it's longer it'll take a full day to render and we do have a very long first phase of low voltage return home so you can pretty much fly for a good five minutes or so at least looks like oh there you go it just stopped all of a sudden and it's rising and the beeps have become lengthier single beep long beeps and it is heading its way back home all right in its track so it is coming sideways it didn't go backwards or anything so it's coming down and let's see Hmm, it doesn't look like it's going to land on the landing pad. So I'm going to readjust it. So you are still able to readjust its landing path while it's coming down. So, oh, and it hovers right there too. Look, it's going to miss the landing pad. So I'm going to move it a little bit and make sure that I land in the landing pad and not in the dirt. And there you go. A successful landing and the motors turn off.
very very nice all right so that'll do it for this video of the flight test and the review of the mjx b12 eis thank you so much for tuning in and watching have a great day and we'll see you again next time